Welcome back to Bray Birds DFS, one of the best places for PGA, NFL, MLB, and NBA news, and of course, DFS. If you don't know by now, I'm Walt. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe to the channel. I am so sorry for the delay. I have had a crazy day. I can't even go into all the details. I mean, my day has not been as bad as Scotty Scheffler, but I've still had a day. Anyway, let's jump into this analysis. So we have another showdown slate. The New York Knicks are going to play the Indiana Pacers. It is potentially elimination closeout day if the Knicks can handle their business. All right, so let's go to my slice. And what we're going to do today is we're going to look at, oh, this is game six. So the great thing about game six in these kind of series is we kind of have a good idea of the data and we can kind of start pulling things together. All right, so we can look at game one. So game one, the Knicks won, and we can see that it was as you would expect. You had a 4-2 line of construction, so four players from one team, that being the Knicks, and two from the other, that being the Pacers, and you had a line of construction where the captain was from the winning team. Everything you would expect. Brunson, this is pre-injury, Brunson was doing his thing. And Anobi still hadn't been injured yet. McConnell playing like a, like a champion for uh, the Pacers. So not a big surprise, 4-2 split like you would expect. We can go to game two. Once again, the Knicks won again. Once again, it was a 4-2 split. And once again, the captain came from the winning lineup. That won the Knicks. DiVincenzo had continued his hot streak. Halliburton was just starting his hot streak. And Hart was still playing 48 minutes a game. And Ananobi hadn't gotten injured yet. And we can see McConnell coming up. So don't have a screenshot from game three, but I can tell you that uh, it was a 3-3 construction with a uh, Indianapolis captain, Halliburton, once again, back-to-back -back good games. All of a sudden, because of all the injuries, Burks and Achua were doing their thing, and you had DiVincenzo continuing to play strong. And then you had my mortal variance in, in, uh, enemy, excuse me, uh, Turner playing well. So we can move on to game four. And game four, no surprise, it was a Pacers captain. It was a 4-2 construction. And the captain came from the winning team, which were the Pacers. Uh, we can see Neesmith, who, uh, who's been kept in a lot for his defensive prowess against Brunson. We can see Brunson still wasn't totally uh, fully back from his injury. He played, he gutted through it. McConnell once again making the winning lineup again. And McBride's ascension uh, continued. Then we can go to game five. Once again, Brunson was back. And when Brunson plays well, the Knicks play well. But this was a nasty one. This was a 5-1 line of construction with the winner, with the captain coming from the winning team, with that being the Knicks. And you had a very saucy, interesting Siakam actually making the winning lineup. Hardenstein was doing his thing. We talked about McBride and Alex Burks kind of increasing their role because Ananobi is injured. All right. So wrapping that all up, what we see is that in this series, the captain has come from the winning team every time. It's not going to happen like that forever. I'm just putting it out there for you. You can do what you think you need to do. But if we're taking anything from it is if you think that the Knicks are going to close out tonight, then you probably want to put Brunson or someone like that in the captain spot. If you think the Pacers are going to do their thing at home, you probably want to put Halliburton or somebody like that in the captain spot. And we'll talk about that in a second. And as expected, the most popular lineup um, construction so far has been a 4-2 lineup construction, but we've had a 3-3 and we've had a 5-1. So if you go 5-1, the good thing about going, if you try to go 5-1, and I say this all the time in football, because I do more showdown videos in football than I actually do main slate videos in football. So if you go 5-1 and it makes sense, if it hits, you have a less likely, you have a lesser likelihood of splitting the prize because most people aren't going to go 5-1 because it's hard to make a lineup that's 5-1 that makes sense. Obviously, if you go 3-3, three, three, those are the most popular constructions because of the way DraftKings makes the salaries and because of the way the human mind thinks we love balance. So I would definitely say 5-1 is obviously the most contrarian. 4-2 is somewhat contrarian, but actually makes the most sense. 
All right, so let's go over the DraftKings and, excuse me, I'm sorry. Man, it's springtime. I've been saying it every video, I'm sorry. It was actually worse when I was a kid. My actual ninth grade teacher said, Walter, if you don't get your allergies under control, you will not get a wife. Imagine a teacher saying that in 2024, be on the news. But me, it was the 90s, I was like, yeah, you're probably right, so I took more medicines. Anyway, so we can look at uh, the who's out, so nobody's still going to be out. Randall not going to be playing this year. So uh, the only injury and nothing, there are no new injuries is what I'm trying to get at. So my first line of what we're going to do, I'm going to make a lineup assuming that the Knicks can close things out. And then I'm going to make a lineup assuming that the Pacers can close it out. Once again, I know a lot of you all are using lineup builders and optimizers and all those things, but it's still good to kind of get into the thought process because you don't accept every lineup. I guess if you're a super boss and you have millions of dollars, you do. But if you have that lineup optimizer, I'm assuming you throw out most of them and you pick the best ones. So maybe this process, what I'm doing, can help you even if you're not hand building. All right. So this first lineup, actually, I guess I did it in the opposite order because they're the home team. Let's say the Pacers are going to close it out. So Halliburton has been the key to the Pacers winning. When he goes off, the Pacers do well. So I could totally understand putting Hall Halliburton in the captain spot. We know his last two games where he hasn't played well, hasn't worked out as well, but we know, and, and you know, he had the 58 and 63 point fantasy point games, but we saw how Halliburton played at the end of calendar year 23. We know he can get 60, 70, 80 fantasy points on a good day and break the slate. So I definitely like the Halliburton in the captain spot. I mean, it's just hard to fade Brunson. I mean, obviously these two games right here, I, I don't think he made the optimal of that game, but I mean, he's had two games where he was human um, and his salary has gone down because of the injury. So, but it's just so hard to, it's hard to fade uh, Brunson. Here's Siakam. So Siakam in game five was the only pacer to make the winning lineup. And I think he's a spicy pick, you know, sweet and spicy. I think he's a spicy pick because I personally, from a DFS perspective, don't like Siakam. And I can tell you why. It's nothing personal. He hasn't returned value since the second game of the Buck series. He had a great start to the Buck series. And every game since he has been he hasn't returned five times value. We want the player to return five times. If you just turn, if you turn the comma into a decimal when it comes to the salary and then multiply it times five, that's the base amount we want a player to uh, return. So at 8,600, you want the player to return 43 fantasy points, 37, 24, 37, 30, you know, 35, 20, 40.75. It's, it's terrible. He never, and this back then, his salary was even higher. So he was really screwing people real good back then. But that being said, this is DFS. This is showdown. You just need Siakam to play aight one game. And all of a sudden, you're buying your mom a boat next Mother's Day. That's all you need. So even though the thought of Siakam putting him in my lineup makes me sick, his ownership is going to be lower, as it should be. And this is a 4-2 construction. Let's say that he and Hall Halliburton have that game that we've all been waiting for, and he goes off, and all of a sudden, you win the GPP. And then Shepard's just been, he's been so consistent. He stayed in that range. This last game, he got 25 minutes, which is good. He's trending up. But he stayed before that into that 18 to 20 minute range. And as far as fantasy points, his fantasy points haven't been impressive, but his salary is, is uh, 2,800. And when you have someone that stands on the court for 25 minutes, if you have that, we see it with Dort sometimes, and that can shoot three pointers, it just takes him making a few more of these threes and some rebounds falling into his hand. Because not all rebounds, I mean, I mean, you know, when it's Nas, Reed, or Gobert, they snatch rebounds. But other players, sometimes the ball just falls into their hands. And all of a sudden, like this game, he got seven rebounds. How'd that happen? If he had just hit some more three-pointers, he went one from five from three. If he'd hit some three-pointers, that would have been a smash game. So Ben Shepard's on the court. He is his... Uh, he has been on the court more, so I like Shepard. We know McBride's been trending in the right direction, literally. He went from 11, 20, 29, 32 to 40 minutes. 
fantasy points. 1.5, 5.5, 17, 30, went back down to 25, but definitely trending in the right direction. So I like McBride. And then, you know, Turner is my variance enemy. Uh, he hears these DFS shows and he decides whatever I say, he's going to do the opposite of. But once again, if I got, if I can put Siakam in my lineup, why can't I put Miles Turner in my lineup? Uh, we know that he does have a ceiling in the 40s, but we also know that randomly he'll have games like this where he gets 17 point two five fantasy points so this is my favorite lineup if you think the pacers are going to win at home let's go to my knicks lineup you know if i if i'm picking a knicks lineup to win at home i'm either putting brunson hart or divincenzo in the captain spot in this case i'm saying that brunson takes over he's the alpha he takes over and we also know that they've been giving hart uh, more rest this is insane to see hart only only get 39 minutes and you know the other game is just an embarrassment 24 minutes they've been getting brunson and hart more rest i think brunson he, his minutes went no <laughs> sorry 43 they they didn't they went back up but definitely hart's been getting more rest so and divincenzo what his minutes been yeah so they've all given the players more more rest and they've kind of given the ball more to burks and mcbride so that's good for them so this lineup, I have Brunson, Hart, DiVincenzo, Achua, but I'm being super saucy with this lineup. I'm saying this is a 5-1 construction. I'm saying the Knicks in this construction, once again, I'm not saying anything. I don't know who's going to win, but I have to, anytime you're making these lineups or approving lineups, you have to like think them out. The narrative, does this make sense? So in this narrative, the Knicks go in and just stomp the pacer so much so that they uh they put the subs in they pull they put the uh the, the end of the bench in because we can see that jericho sims you know can average and and get what was that the other time there was a blowout in the other direction he got 16 minutes and 15.5 fantasy points so and even last night if you were watching the game last night they put garza in uh and like in like five minutes garza got like 12 fantasy points so Sims is kind of like Garza. He doesn't need a lot, especially when you put Sims in the end of the game, he's going up against Scrubs. And we know Sims started a little bit this year. So I'm getting real saucy with this lineup. I'm saying it's a 5-1 Knicks lineup. And the only pacer that gets into this lineup <clears throat> is Halliburton. So this is my thought process. Let me know what you think. You can leave comments, but otherwise go out there and win that guava.